Oh, what the f Oh my god! What are you doing here? You're gonna get hurt! Sorry, guys. I don't know what that thing was doing there. I've got a surprise guest, but that wasn't it. Pull up a chair, Lou. Well, hello! So, as you can see, we've got some pretty big news. Not to imply you're big or anything. You're perfect, actually. Have you lost weight? Just half a pound. We've got some exciting news to share. We're having a baby in less than a month. Sorry I didn't say anything sooner. This might actually be old news if you follow me or Lauren on social media because we posted the gender reveal back in May, but if you missed it, now's your chance to partake. Here is the montage that Lauren lovingly crafted to reveal the news to our family and friends. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? We need to talk! I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. Not fat, I'm pregnant. <laughs> I'm going to have a baby. No way! We're gonna be parents. I am the father. There's a baby in there? Oh my god. I'm gonna have a baby in there! Baby. Baby. Bebe. B-A-B-Y baby. baby. That's right. It's a baby, see? see? I can't have a baby because I have a 12.30 lunch meeting. John, get ready to have some kids! Lauren. John. Lauren. Johnny. Lulu. Johnny. Lulu. Johnny. Lulu. John. Who? Am I talking too much? Yes. Not the moments you've all been waiting for. Why don't you explain this to me like I'm five? What, 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 do you, what is it, a boy or a girl? Is it a boy or a girl? Gentlemen, it's a girl. It's a boy, it's a boy. It's a girl. And I do not plan on helping unless it's a boy. It's a girl. We got a baby boy! A girl. It's a boy. Definitely a boy. It's a girl. Hey, what's this thing? Huh? It's a what? What is it? Bouncing baby, baby brat. We know. The suspense is terrible. He Bro, come on! Come on! Get on with it. Yes, get on with it! Begin the countdown. We're having a baby girl, our own little Athena. No, that's not actually what we're calling her, but trust me, I tried. But yeah, our life is about to get pretty f***ing wild, and so is my upload schedule. As of this upcoming Monday, September 30th, Messed Up Origins will be seven years old. The Messed Up Origins of the Little Mermaid was posted on that day in 2017. And since that video first blew up, it's been my goal to post a new deep dive into mythology and folklore every single week. I've mostly been successful too. I'm not perfect, I've definitely missed a few here and there, especially this year, but now you can see what I've been spending my time on. We found out about the pregnancy back in February, and since then we've been preparing for baby girl's arrival and trying to make the most out of our last year without a kid. Traveling to Ireland and Greece, shout out to Trova Trip and those of you who've joined us, spending time with family and friends, and just generally going outside and touching more grass. Now I don't want you to worry because this is not a retirement announcement. This isn't even an I'm taking a break announcement but I will have to step away for a few weeks after she's born because I gotta take care of my girls and we really wanna savor this early period as much as we possibly can. Don't get me wrong, we know all about the fourth trimester and how miserable it makes parents with the sleep deprivation, poopy diapers, the spit up and constant crying, but Lauren's used to dealing with that from me, so she's gonna be a pro. Besides, when you look past that gooey, stinky mess, you realize how special of a time that is, and I really don't wanna miss out on anything because I'm too busy comparing wolf howl sound effects. All that being said, I love comparing wolf howl sound effects. This podcast is literally my dream job, the job I always dreamt of having, and I cannot give the algorithm gods an excuse to banish me, so I will go back to uploading as soon as I possibly can with some important caveats. And that's really what I'm announcing today. My baby can get bent. What's important are my YouTube videos, right darling? <laughs> Seriously though, I've been craving a big change in how I produce content for a while now but I've been running on that weekly upload hamster wheel for so long that I felt trapped, 
like it was impossible to step off without breaking my fucking ankles. But the birth of my daughter, a phrase I still can't believe I'm saying by the way, feels like the God's way of forcing me to take that leap because it's just reality that I cannot maintain the current upload schedule with a baby to take care of. I work a minimum of 60, often 70 hours a week, which I'm not complaining about by the way, that's totally my choice. But trying to keep that up while being a parent is just gonna break me mentally. Constantly bouncing between roles is gonna lead to me not being fully present for either and ultimately failing everyone. If I had a full on production team around me, that'd be a little bit different, but I'm still the lead when it comes to research, writing, editing, strategic planning. I do have some help and full credit to my researchers for everything they do to set me up for success and Lauren for editing all of our shorts and handling all of our poster sales, but there's no denying we've got some key man syndrome going on. With this in mind, I really am excited to make these changes because they take messed up origins back to its roots, meaning you'll get the content you want the most and I'll be a little closer to becoming the creator I've always wanted to be. But first, I wanna thank our sponsor Squarespace for supporting the show. I've been working with Squarespace for five straight years now, and that's because they genuinely are the best at what they do, making the process of creating, designing, and maintaining a website easier than it ever has been. Their new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint, lets you choose from a huge library of curated layouts that are tailored to fit your brand perfectly and look great on any device. Once you've got your layout chosen, unleash your creativity with their revolutionary Fluid Engine, boasting reimagined drag and drop technology that allows for limitless customization options. From there, the specifics are based on what your goal is. Add galleries of your artwork, manage your inventory if you're selling that artwork, or even schedule appointments if you wanna teach your clients to make artwork themselves. And to those worried about all the software this is gonna require you to download and install and update, it sounds too good to be true, but all of this designing can be done inside your web browser, so you never have to download or install anything. There's a reason Squarespace has been dominating the web design space since they entered it. Just hit that link in the description to see why and use code John Solo for 10% off your first purchase. All right, so if you don't read our comment section, you may not be aware of this, but there is a handful of topics that you guys request a lot that I've never talked about or even really acknowledged. But the curtain's coming down today, and I actually want you to pay attention to the man behind it. Some of your most demanded topics include Robin Hood, The Black Cauldron, Sword in the Stone, Studio Ghibli movies, I hope I'm saying that right, The Wizard of Oz, Phantom of the Opera, Atlantis, Okay, there's way more than a handful. I know these are the stories you guys want me to explore. I've known it since I was filming in front of my bed in Florida, but there's an issue I've always run into with these topics. They're fucking massive. Even with my researcher's help, it would be impossible for me to upload 45 minute deep dives on a weekly basis. I just don't have the mental bandwidth, but the videos need to be that long in order to do those topics justice. I've tried working with editors to expedite that creative process, but I've had a hard time finding an affordable, coachable, skilled editor with enough passion for mythology and folklore that they don't mind dedicating their entire professional life to it. If you know someone or think you are that someone, send your credentials to jobs at messeduporigins.com. So basically my system for the past few years has been to work on one massive project in the background over the course of a few months while steadily maintaining that weekly upload schedule with quote unquote smaller topics about gods, cryptids, etc. The problem with that is I only have time to work on three, maybe four big projects a year. And if I keep going at this pace, it's gonna be another five years before I get to all of your most requested topics. Think of my channel's life essence as a bonfire. Daily shorts are like kindling, the weekly deep dives are sticks, and the big projects are like gasoline. You need a proper mixture of all three for the fire to burn steady. And while adding sticks and kindling has kept the flame alive, I need more gas if I'm gonna keep warm. I have always felt a special bond with my long form episodes and I look back fondly on the creation process. I used to think it was just because I spent a lot of time with the material and really got to know it, but now I'm realizing that I approach those topics with way less pressure. Like I know it's gonna be a long process so I can go at it at a comfortable pace. I would love to apply that same mentality to my weekly upload schedule, but that will only be possible with a lot of planning 
which I don't have time to do if I'm stuck in that weekly grind. That is why my priorities are changing for the rest of this year and through 2025. Instead of stressing about uploading a new deep dive into folklore and myth every single week, I'll only stress about it every other week, with smaller community-oriented episodes in the weeks in between. There's going to be less views rolling in at first, and that's definitely going to sting, but the topics I have planned should be more than enough to compensate for that and having the additional time to research, write, film, and edit means each episode will be bigger and better than it ever could have been on the old upload schedule. Because that's another frustrating component of the past few years. The time constraint I've inflicted on myself has kept me in a box creatively. I want to do more with my content than just sit in front of a microphone and drone on. But that's all I've really had time for. And while I've definitely evolved over the years, I think that evolution could have been more impressive had I given myself some breathing room. And that's the other thing. When I finally do cover the Black Cauldron, I want it to be worth the wait. I want it to feel special. And unless my process changes, that won't be the case. Because not only will I not have the time to put in the extra effort to my writing, recording, or editing, but all that is going to get worse from pure exhaustion. Those creative juices gotta refill sometime, but I've been so caught up in grinding these last few years that I usually don't even notice when my tank runs dry. I'm just running off the fumes and momentum from the last project, which makes it really hard to plan ahead and strategize. So usually when big things happen in the world of myth and folklore, particularly new movies, shows, and video games, I miss out on them completely. With all this in mind, I have been blocking out time these last few weeks to do some planning for the rest of this year and 2025, and I want to give you a quick rundown of what you can expect. In no particular order, the 2025 lineup includes My Neighbor Totoro, The Black Cauldron, Robin Hood, Wicked, Spirited Away, and The Sword in the Stone. And those subjects are set in stone, but I'm always taking suggestions, so make sure to comment yours if you want me to look into any new mythologies or folklore. Safe to say, it's going to be a pretty good year. The rest of 2024 ain't bad either, though. We're covering more scary stories to tell in the dark this October, The Wizard of Oz in November, along with more Polynesian mythology in honor of Moana 2, and, dare I say it, Phantom of the Opera in December. Before you get too excited, I have to give the disclaimer that this year's topics are subject to change because Baby Solo could be here any day now and completely throw off our schedule. That being said, I have anticipated that and have been planning ahead to try and minimize the damage that stinky little wrecking ball does. Now to those wondering what I've got planned for those weeks between big uploads, even that's got me excited because it leaves more opportunity for interactions with the community. For one, I'll be live streaming more. Might be on YouTube or Twitch or both, but there are so many badass mythology games out right now that I think would be so fun to experience together. I also want to go back to reviewing and reacting to movies and shows that are based around folklore, myth, and even classic books. I really enjoyed reviewing Cruella and Mulan, and those episodes got a decent response, so maybe I'll review Wicked when that comes out. Or that dreaded Snow White remake that's been haunting my nightmares. Or should I call it Snow Why? the hell are we doing this? I could also go back and talk about Blood of Zeus or that show Chaos that people keep recommending. My goals with this kind of content are twofold. One, I want to build a stronger bond and sense of community with you guys. I always knew, based on how positive and informative our comment section is, that we have one of the best communities on YouTube. But the incredible people that I met on the Messed Up Origins field trips changed that optimistic thought into an undeniable fact. As for my second goal, I want to be a louder voice in this mythology and folklore niche. My passion for this stuff is burning just as hot as it was when I started Messed Up Origins seven years ago. If I lost this channel tomorrow and had to get a new job, I would most likely go back to school and get a degree in folklore so I could teach this stuff at the college level and continue posting content on the side, of course. The point is, I really do care, and I'm a little tired of allowing fear to hold me back from striving for a healthier work-life balance or branching into new formats. So I'm done with that shit. You're still going to get plenty of the messed up origins and mythology content that you know and love, but with a little more variety mixed in. 
and I hope that me putting myself out there will encourage you to make your voice heard as well, whether it's in the comment section or you call into a live stream and tell us a story. Now, the last thing I want to discuss with you guys is my health, because I know I scared a lot of you with that update I posted last month, and I want to clear up any confusion. After I posted that update and saw the comments rolling in, I noticed that most of you thought the chronic pain I was referring to was in my back, which would make sense because I got that spine surgery back in 2019 but my back is actually fine. No, my main sources of pain right now are my wife, and my rod fellas, always making me dinner and telling me how much she appreciates me. Shit sends me into an existential crisis because I don't know what I did to deserve such an angel of a human being. <laughs> my main sources of pain right now are my right wrist and my left forearm slash elbow. I've actually had this wrist pain for about three and a half years now. You can see from this old Patreon update I posted that it started in early 2021 and took a total of three years, four doctors, an x-ray, an MRI, an ultrasound, and then an arthrogram for them to tell me I have a torn ligament called the lunotriquetral ligament. <laughs> Pretty sure it got f***ed up when I punched one of LA Fitness's punching bags because those things feel like they're filled with concrete. Now I've mostly been able to treat the torn ligament with physical therapy, but I think I use it too often for it to ever fully recover. Pretty much any time the pain starts to fade away, I'll have a big YouTube project that takes like 30, maybe 40 hours of editing, and by the end of the week, my whole hand is burning from all the rigid little movements I've been doing with the computer mouse. So that's just been pretty annoying to deal with, and then in the past six months, something in my forearm slash elbow got f***ed up. My body had to have been manufactured in the same factory that Shein makes their clothes, because this thing was clearly made on the cheap, and it's falling apart a third into its lifespan. I don't know how it happened, I haven't gotten a diagnosis yet, all I know is that it hurts when I lean on it, when I lift weights, and that even typing on the keyboard hurts it. I think that means it's a grip issue, something related to my fingies. When I posted that health update, I was in a lot of pain. The injuries had flared up pretty bad and it was just too painful to keep using my hands in the exact way that was triggering them. So I took that week off, did my PT exercises at home, and then met with some specialists about how to treat my wrist. My forearm is the bigger inconvenience and in a lot more pain, but it hasn't been diagnosed yet while my wrist has, so I figured that would be the quicker fix then I could at least use one of my arms reliably. The specialist told me my options are surgery, which I don't want and isn't covered by my insurance, or platelet-rich plasma injections, which are also not covered by health insurance, but are significantly more affordable and less invasive. The thing with PRP injections is that the treatment hurts because it's a pro-flammatory, it lasts for three weeks, those three weeks are filled with rest, and then afterward there's physical therapy, so I don't know if it would even be possible to produce content during that time. At the end of the day, that's better than surgery though, so if I do get treated, chances are I'll be getting some injections in early 2025. I'll keep you posted on that though, and if anyone watching has experience with PRP, please tell me all about it in a comment. I really am sorry for freaking you guys out with that post. It was not my intention to mislead you into thinking I was getting emergency surgery right away. What I intended to communicate was that I was recommended surgery and exploring options with a specialist, which is how I learned about PRP. I'll be sure to give a much less confusing update when the next steps are set in stone, but thank you all for the well wishes and kind words these past few weeks. To have ChatGPT summarize this for you, I think that changing the frequency of big uploads to every other week is going to improve the quality of the content and therefore the health of this channel. The slightly slower work pace and occasional weekend off will be good for my mental and physical health, which is really important now because I'm going to be a dad soon. Also, more often than not, I will still be posting some kind of content on those weeks without big uploads. It's just going to be something that takes way less prep time. Sure live streams, Q&As, or even just short discussions on really niche topics. Plus, more Patreon content, including the return of solo radio. So if you want to go the extra mile to support the channel, consider donating to the Patreon through the link in the description. I'll be honest with you guys, it's a little bit scary to be making these changes, but it's also exciting. 
Like I said earlier, this brings me a step closer to becoming the creator I want to be. It was corny the first time, and even cornier now that I've repeated it, but that doesn't make it any less true. You know, I haven't done one of these personal slash channel updates since New Year's 2020, where I rightfully told you all to lower your expectations for me. And that was more than four f***ing years ago. In that time, I've moved to Arizona, gotten married, hit 1 million subscribers, got a second dog, if you can call her that, moved back to Illinois, got married even harder, bought a house, and now I'm having a kid. I do not want to wait another four years to sit down and talk like this again, so expect to hear another update from me in January. I'll give you guys some more concrete details about what you can expect in the new year and share some horror stories about the fourth trimester. It's weird, you know? Right now, as I sit here and talk to you, I can say with a straight face that I have never been pooped on. By anyone. Not even Gunther. But in that way, this video is a time capsule because right now I'm staring down the barrel of a shit-filled cannon. And when we do talk in 2025, I'm gonna be a changed man. Thank you.